Welcome to Voices for Impact, the podcast. Started during the COVID-19 pandemic and made in Syracuse, Voices for Impact is full of conversations with thought leaders from around the world that have made significant accomplishments in their lives and have gone through their own challenges, but have made it through those adversities and made positive impacts through their work. I'm your host, Danielle Mensing, and as a fundraiser for a nonprofit, I believe the most valuable tool you can give yourself is making a positive impact on others and your community. Every conversation is going to give you tools and tactics from entrepreneurs, athletes, artists, and change makers that will encourage you to develop a growth mindset and reimagine how you can find your purpose. Now let's get started. This episode is sponsored by Always Chasing Better Coaching, which is for women who know that living their best life would have a tremendous impact on their work, relationships, and day-to-day life, and they are ready to go get it. As an Always Chasing Better Coaching client, you won't just dream about your best life, you'll create it. Reach out to Michelle Horton at Always Chasing Better Coaching today. Voices for Impact friends and listeners receive 50% off the Becoming the Best Version of Yourself online workshop. Go to Voices for Impact Instagram and Facebook for more information. Welcome to another episode of Voices for Impact. My name is Danielle Mensing, founder of Voices for Impact, and today I am chatting with Michelle Horton. Michelle is a coach, consultant, and CEO of Always Chasing Better and Archimy Group. She has had a lifelong passion for education transformation and brings a wide range of leadership skills and systems improvement to Archimy Group. Transformation has always inspired Michelle, and after a 30-year-long marriage, she set out to change the trajectory of her life by first finding her authentic best self and then setting a course to overcome the challenges and obstacles that were holding her back. Always Chasing Better Coaching has blossomed from that process and her sincere desire to empower others to live their best lives. So thank you so much for having a conversation with me today, Michelle. Thank you, Danielle, for having me. I love your podcast. I'm so honored to be here. Tell me when, how did you go from a 25-year career as an educator and administrator to transitioning to a different career and life goals? Can you talk about how that time of change and transition inspired the creation of Always Chasing Better Coaching. Sure. Yeah, I I really um, have been fortunate because I had a great education. I started a great career. I worked in another line of business before I went into education, um, but then became a teacher and administrator and loved it, all the while knowing that there was something else for me. Um, I was married at the time for a long time uh, to a great guy who was the father of my 29-year-old daughter. I hate to admit it, but it's true. Um, And it just, there came a point where I took a pause and I just looked at my life and said, this isn't the path I chose. You know, I, I talked about this recently with someone, our generation, my generation, the path was laid out for us. You know, as women raised by mothers who grew up in the 60s and were having babies in the late 60s and 70s, our moms were just experiencing the world in a very different way. So I was raised to believe that I could do anything, but I really had to stay on this path. So in order to have a good life, I had to go to college, finish college, get a husband, get a nice house, get a career. You know, it was all laid out for me. Uh, at some point you recognize, I recognize that that wasn't necessarily the path I would have chosen for myself. And I had an opportunity, um, really a personal opportunity to take a pause and go, okay, what is it that you want? And so at that point, that's when uh, I became divorced and I changed my career. And I just said, from this point forward, the things I do are the choices that I make that I'm going to create my own path. And it's hard when you're 50 or older and you want to do something completely different. Uh, The the learning curve is like this, but it was absolutely worth doing. Um, I wouldn't change anything about it. 
but I also recognize the need that people have to have a partner to walk through that with. I didn't have anybody to turn to. I, my friends, my, my family loves me, my friends love me, but those weren't the people that I really needed to help me uh, create some goals for myself. I was doing that on my own, creating an action plan. I mean, literally, and holding me accountable to things. Um, so I really want to do that for people that are going through big changes or want to create big changes or even make big decisions because sometimes those big decisions mean something down the line. And we don't always have, you know, our friends have something invested in us, our families do. So oftentimes we just need someone who's in it for us, mm -hmm. has nothing at stake, and can lead us through a process, walk us through a process that land, lands us where um, we really want to be. Right. Um, and I know we discussed this before, but there's so many times, um, I think within a person's life, even um, in, in my age group, when you're in your 20s and you're finishing college um, and you go into your first job and you have that first job and maybe you spent all this time going to school for a specific field like engineering and you decide you don't like engineering and you're in yeah. it and taking that leap of faith of what do I do now that I've done yeah. all this work and I don't like it. Yes. Um, and having somebody like you who is there to assist them in that transitional process is so um, like amazing. It's, a, it's just a niche that hasn't been cultivated yet. So it's so thanks. scary. It, the, the, the prospect of uprooting yourself and taking a direction into the unknown, because really that's what you're asking yourself to do. That is a really scary proposition. And even when you're successful, you're good at what you do and you're successful, but you know it's not for you or you want to be better. You want to break that ceiling. You you know you can be more successful, but you just can't seem to get there because you keep hitting the same wall and you don't understand why. It really is a great way. Coaching is a great way to kind of have someone um, work through that with you. With an, you know, that's the difference between therapy and coaching, right? Therapy, we're going to sit and talk about it. Well, in coaching, you're, it's an action. That is something you're going to be active. You're going to be doing. You're going to be looking at your data. You're going to be evaluating your results. And we're going to be making changes. And, and results matter. Results matter. Yeah. Um, what are some specific examples of the services that you provide to people through your coaching services? So a wide range. So I do obviously one-on-one -on -one coaching and it's, and it's, my clients are different. You know, some of them are working through some really big decisions, you know, lifestyle changes, divorce, uh, sexuality issues. Other, others are working through that. One client is doing really well. She, she's really successful, but she continues to have this one issue that keeps coming around and around in her work. What we're finding is it's really not in her work because everything about who we are seeps from what you know it's 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 interchangeable really we're one person and we go to work each day and carry ourselves with us right so um so one-on-one -on -one coaching but also group coaching so uh for example when i host online events uh for example i'm doing a uh your best self virtual retreat series right now and what happens out of those is i end up with a group of people who are interested in digging a little bit deeper in something and so we form a group and do that work in a group setting. And again, I do live online uh, events, webinars, um, so group. And also um, I, I put stuff out for free on my Facebook page. So there's, there's just a range of um, services. And I'm, I'm have a, you know, we talked a little bit before we, we came on that I, I'm a big idea person. And so oftentimes someone will come to me and say, well, have you thought about this? This is really what I'm looking for. I'm like, G give me five minutes and I will come up with something. We'll, we'll work on something together. Yeah. So a lot of times it's really based on the client or the group of clients and what they're looking, what the outcome is. Mm -hmm. And once we know what the outcome is, the design falls into place. Right. Now, what do you love most about what you do? Oh, wow. Um, I think it's having an impact. So when you are part of someone making a big change in their life, something that's important to them, it is really rewarding. And it has a ripple effect because we know 
what I see is when my clients are successful, what happens to the people around them? They, it, 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 it has a ripple effect. And that's, I didn't think about that when I first started. It's, it's very similar to teaching and being an administrator. You know, you work with one teacher and it has a ripple effect on other teachers and other students. It's the same way in life coaching. It's really watching the ripple effect and seeing people become the best version of themselves, uh, which is sustainable, is, is huge. And that makes the world a better place, frankly, which right now we really could use some of that. That is true. What is some advice that you would give to your younger self or somebody that um, in the younger age range that is in a transition mode? Yeah, I would say two things. The first thing was, is make sure you know your authentic self. Make sure you know who you are in the deepest depths of your soul, because that is, a, that is the best version of yourself. Who am I? Who was I meant to be? Who am I? You have to start there. And I think the second thing is make decisions that nurture that person. You can make decisions for other people and it, and it takes care of the moment, but that will build on itself and it will, it'll end up taking you somewhere that you don't want to go. And it's, it's scary. It takes a lot of courage, um, but make the decisions that are best for you uh, and for your authentic self and know who that is. Yeah, that's really good advice. Um, what advice would you have for others that are looking to open up a small business? I mean, it's one thing to transition your whole life personally, but as far as work goes um, and, and the fact that you created your own business out of your transitions, yeah. um, what advice do you have for those people? Well, that's the hardest part. So one of the things I've been able to do is make a parallel between starting a new business and going through the transition of a marriage and family, what my, what my family looked like before. So there's a lot of similarities because change is very similar. No matter what you're doing, it, it feels the same, it, it, even though the details might be different. The one good piece of advice about starting your own business is you have to learn two things. You have to learn what it takes to market yourself in social media. There is no way around it. Mm -hmm. And it is a steep learning curve. And so you have to be working on that all the time. At the same time, you have to be honing your product, honing your craft, um, think about what it's going to look like. So coaching is this really abstract thing. People don't really understand what it looks like and what it feels like. So my challenge is, to really present who I am as a coach in other ways, which ties back to the social media. So those two things, learn how to market because we're really good at what we do. People who open a business, open a business because they're good at X, whatever X is. Mm -hmm. They're not necessarily good at marketing. <laughs> so you have to get good at it or you have to hire a team that can help you through that. And most people starting out don't have that. Mm -hmm. um, so you really just have to learn. Um, and be ready to work hard, but it's rewarding work. How do you keep a positive mindset during challenging times? Um, well, that's the nature of really the foundation of the work that I do with my clients as well. So there's a big chunk of my work that is in anchored in mindfulness. Mm -hmm. um, I, as a matter of fact, when I do sessions online or I do small group counseling, we always start with some deep breaths. We take some time in gratitude um, because gratitude just opens up your heart and opens up your mind to possibilities. It just takes it to a different, being centered in mindfulness. And when I mentioned before, um, knowing your authentic self and really being connected with your authentic self. We all have this little voice in our shoulder, you know, like the classic, devil on your shoulder, the angel on the other shoulder, good versus evil. We all have that voice in our head. It's really recognizing that that voice is there. And when you're feeling negative, that's, that's that voice that served a purpose long ago, but doesn't necessarily now. Yeah. So the, the positive, the authentic self, the, the person that you are down deep, that's a positive space. And 
so I get there, you know, I, I do a lot of breathing and I do a lot of checking my body, you know, like how is stress manifesting itself in my body? A lot of times my shoulders will be up by my ears. You know, I can feel it in my chest, mm -hmm. um, carry it in my jaw. You know, a lot of people carry it right here. Um, yeah. Yeah. And then, so it's really checking in with my body. And then I have things I say to myself that are just kind of pick me ups. You know, one of the things I've been saying recently is, um, what if this isn't a problem? Because a lot of times we create out of anxiety, right? Well, this might happen and this might happen and this might happen. Mm -hmm. So really focusing on the moment and staying present and saying, what if this isn't a problem? Um, and I'm doing a lot of that because I'm learning so much about social media, marketing, and growing a business that it's easy to get sucked down this hole of, oh my God, there's not enough on Instagram. There's not enough. I'm not doing enough live. I'm not doing enough. You know, you know, you could go around and around and around, but really having things that you say to yourself, that I say to myself that are uplifting and tap into my authentic self and say, no, hard work pays off. Um, you'll get there and you're exactly where you need to be today. So really developing some things that, you know, I'm going to do that with my clients too. develop some things that you say to yourself that just move you through to the next moment. Cause it's all that we have. Yeah. Oh, that was like a lot of really good advice. So let me just recap. Staying mindful, the mindfulness, being uh, grateful and having gratitude. Yes. And um, I, I guess you would sum up the last part is having some positive affirmations to say yes. to yourself, to remind yourself of, um, is this as bad as I'm making it and saying, and being present in the present moment, not thinking necessarily yeah. about the future or the past, but thinking about your body and how it feels as far as stress and relaxing your body. Exactly. I think we have to be our own best friend. I, I mean, we're, most of us are fortunate to have family and friends around us that love us. Um, but there's no one else like us, A. So they're only helping us as much as they are capable. And we are in our minds. We are in our heads. So we have to be, we know ourselves better than anyone else. We have to be our best friends and uh, take care of ourselves and be compassionate. And, and the best way to do that is just really be in touch with your authenticity. And uh, it, it's not an easy thing to do. And, and at one point in my life, I didn't even know what that was. So uh, yeah, it's something that I, I don't think until recently, or really, I feel like this year for me, at least I haven't thought of uh, that um, being your authentic self and diving deep into what you, who you really are and getting to know yourself and you as a person and what your wants and needs are, um, yeah. without letting all the other outside external factors influence yourself. Yeah. Um, so I think those are really great points. Yeah. Finding your authentic self and staying in touch with that authentic self. I think of, I kind of think of people having their authentic self, and then they have their inner critic, right? These are two forces that are there. And a lot of times when clients come to me, that inner critic has taken hold and they can't seem to, and they don't even recognize it, but that inner critic has just gotten hold of them and their authentic self is still there, but just not able to, you know, be accessed and come up to the surface for some air and for some, some air time. Yeah. I think coaching is really an abstract concept for people. Um, it used to be that only professional athletes and business executives and um, celebrities had access to life coaches. And we don't really know what that is. Um, I think life coaching is becoming more and more accessible because people want more and more quality out of their life. And that's really what life coaching is. It's really you defining what you want from your life and having a partner that's focused on that for you. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, my mission is really to get more people some access to life coaching uh, because it is so valuable and seeing the investment in it being worth it. I think women typically will focus a lot on the outside, right? Well, we will spend money on our hair. We will spend money on our nails, our makeup, our clothes, our bodies. We will go to, but the idea of really investing on our insides isn't always the first thing we think of when we're in a difficult 
point in our life. Um, so I, I just wanted to say that, that I think that, you know, one of my goals is to make life coaching more accessible to people. Um, it's, it's a relatively small investment with big results. Um, it's based in science and some art. So it's really, uh, a great thing for people to participate in. And, um, I'm really excited about it. It's a great thing. I think what you're doing is amazing and so needed, especially in this area. Um, I, I don't think uh, there's a, there's a few of you, if j just you, that does specifically what you do. And so yeah. that's so neat. Um, my last question for you is how do you define success? Success for me is three things, uh, financial freedom, mm -hmm. healthy, Mm -hmm. and healthy relationships. So a healthy body and healthy relationships. If I have those three things, and I do now, um, it's a good thing. That doesn't mean I don't want more, but success for me is those three things. Um, a healthy body, healthy relationships, and financial freedom. I love that. I can, I can agree with that um, for myself as well. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for giving us some insight into your story and what you do. I really appreciate it. I am so glad to have been on here. I really appreciate it. And I wish you all the luck too. Thank this you. Great, great, a great show. Thank you so much. And everyone um, check below uh, this post to see all of the social media and website uh, links to Always Chasing Better Coaching. And thank you so much for watching. Voices for Impact is on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and as well as podcast platforms. So please follow, like, subscribe to stay connected. And I'll see you next time on Voices for Impact. Hi, everyone. This episode is sponsored by Always Chasing Better Coaching, which is for women who know that living their best life would have a tremendous impact on their work, relationships, and day-to-day -day life, and they are ready to go get it. As an Always Chasing Better Coaching client, you won't just dream about your best life, you'll create it. Reach out to Michelle Horton at Always Chasing Better Coaching today. Voices for Impact friends and listeners receive 50% off the Becoming the Best Version of Yourself online workshop. Go to Voices for Impact Instagram and Facebook for more information.